<laughs> look at you, Shelly. Oh, look at you. Oh, <laughs> Hello everybody! Today I'm telling you how to build a fictional world, at least if you want to really, really suck at it. I pulled my audience for some of the worst world building trends they've ever seen, and I'm breaking them down for you today. Isn't that right, boo boos? Isn't that right? You're an expert world builder. Yes, you are. Want to annoy the crap out of your readers? Then take notes. There will be a test and you will be graded. Before we get started, I wanted to give a shout out to World Anvil who has sponsored today's video. These world building tips may suck, but you know who never sucks? World Anvil. They're amazing. World Anvil is a browser based world building platform designed for novelists and writers. It allows for quick and easy world building where everything is safe, organized, and perfectly linked together. You can create multiple timelines. You can track the history of your world. You can create interactive maps and family trees. And now you can create entire novels. World Anvil recently added novel writing software called Manuscripts where you can plot your book, organize your chapters, and write from anywhere, all with easy access to your world building and with access to 25 custom built prompt filled world building templates. I use the novel writing software to share the prologue and first three chapters of my upcoming dark fantasy, The Savior Sister. It was beyond easy to do, and now I have teasers live to help promote my release. All you have to do is export your novel or teaser and publish it to World Anvil. You can keep your manuscript private for your eyes only, or you can make it public if you want to reward patrons, if you want to send chapters to beta readers, if you want to engage readers, or in my case, if you want to showcase a teaser in order to hype up an upcoming release. The free version of World Anvil will get you started with all its major features, but Guild membership offers a host of extra features, including comprehensive privacy settings, co-authors, different presentation options, and so much more. And right now you can get 20% off Master and Grandmaster memberships using code Jenna Moresi. If you want to dive deeper into your world building and writing, check out World Anvil, click the link below and plug in that coupon code. Get yourself 20% off. If you want to hear more about world building as well as the writing industry as a whole, be sure to subscribe to my channel and ring that bell. I post videos on Wednesdays with bonus content on Mondays. And don't forget my dark fantasy novel, The Savior Sister, is currently available for pre-order in ebook, paperback, and hardback. Plus, I am hosting a massive pre-sale giveaway. If you pre-order TSS and enter my giveaway, you will automatically receive a five chapter teaser of TSS. Plus I am handing out over 35 prizes as well as three huge grand prizes. All you got to do is pre-order TSS and enter the giveaway. I have all the information listed below. Right now let's get into the 10 worst world building tips. I'm teaching you how to screw up your world in 10 easy steps. A quick disclaimer, this video is a joke. Please do not implement any of these steps because I'm being sarcastic. I know that should be a given, but common sense ain't common, and some of y'all are sensitive. On to the tips. Number one, the world building black hole. You're not a real writer unless you spend at least a decade crafting your world. But Jenna, what could you possibly be creating that would require 10 years? Uh, hello, an entire world. I'm talking multiple continents, hundreds of systems of government, thousands of years of history. All of this is vital to writing a book, even if only 2% of it will actually appear in the book. Now, I know what you're thinking. Most people who spend years upon years upon years creating their worlds don't actually end up writing the book. And that might be true. Okay, that's definitely true. But doesn't the true beauty of writing come from never starting it? I think so. Number two, info dump. Everyone knows that world building and info dumping are synonymous. Does your world even exist if you don't include at least one essay per chapter breaking down the aspects of your fictional society that aren't at all relevant to the plot? People don't pick up books for stories. They care about the kingdom's main imports and exports, as well as its complex system of taxation. Riveting, tell me more. If you're unsure whether or not you're info dumping enough, stop and ask yourself, 
Have I paused at least once on this page to ramble on about something inconsequential to the story at hand? Get to it, dummy! People need to know your world's stance on pubic hair grooming. It is imperative to the reading experience. On a similar note, number three, world building or bust. We already covered that people don't read books for stupid stuff like characters or adventure or quests. They read books to learn more about climate, terraforming, and blacksmithing. That's why encyclopedias stood the test of time. They are the ultimate in entertainment. The world building should always overshadow the plot itself. It's not there to enhance the story, it is the story. If your book only has one or two plot points, who cares? If you ask me, that's one or two too many. I want to know all about that sweet, sweet irrigation system and literally nothing else. Number four, make it medieval. All fantasy worlds must be modeled after medieval Europe because it's the law. Have you ever read a fantasy book that's not medieval inspired? <laughs> of course not, they don't exist. Still, every once in a while you run into some crazy person who's like, blah blah blah, medieval fantasy is overdone, blah 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 blah, there's thousands of years worth of history to take inspiration from, blah blah blah. Some people, am I right? Let me tell you, fantasy writers may be pumping out medieval stories over and over and over and over again, but I'm pretty sure there's nothing wrong with overused and unoriginal tropes. Besides, there is no point in history quite as exciting and colorful and inventive as the dark Dark Ages. What a time to be alive! Number five, historical accuracy. Every person in your entire world is white, but that's just historical accuracy. Little known fact, world building means you are building the world, which means you're creating its history. Isn't that weird? And we can't talk about historical accuracy without bringing up misogyny and gratuitous violence against women. Are all the women in your story repeatedly degraded? Of course they are. You gotta make sure your fictional universe is accurate to a history that doesn't even exist. And we get it. Sure, you make all the rules. Sure, you can write literally whatever you want. But wouldn't it be easier to copy everything we think we know about European history? And if you're going this route, be sure to do absolutely no research whatsoever, because then you might discover that a lot of your historically accurate world building is completely incorrect. And this process isn't about learning or creating or even thinking. It's about... Actually, what is it about again? Number six, coddle the reader. I know a lot of people say you should subtly weave your world building into the story, but you know what's a lot better than subtlety? Slapping your reader upside the head. Take that world building and rub it in your reader's face until they puke. Say for example, your character says things like, praise the gods, or may the gods have mercy on your soul. This should make it clear that your society is polytheistic, but there's always the chance that your reader only has half a brain. Better include another one of those info dumps breaking down their entire belief system just to be sure. Readers are like babies, they're helpless and stupid. Be sure to spoon feed all the details to them so they don't actually have to think. Number seven, keyboard smash. All the most eloquent world builders know the key to crafting the perfect names for their fictional characters. Keyboard smash. Do it until you've got at least five syllables going. The more vowels, the better. This is particularly true for fantasy world building because let's be real, if you can pronounce that name after reading it five times in a row, you done fucked up. What kind of fantasy stories have names like Arthur or Ella? Bet those stories suck. If you really want to prove you're a pro, create a 27 syllable name with only three consonants and make sure it's pronounced using none of the letters available. If his name is spelt G E O U I I Q apostrophe exclamation point pi sign G, it better be pronounced Steve, I'm just saying. Number eight, complicate the shit out of it. World building often requires building systems, whether they're magical, governmental, or technological. And you know you've done right by your readers if you've made the system so damn convoluted, they need a reference guide to get through it. Some people use the rule kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> More like keeping it simple is stupid. Your audience should have to read your magic system at least 10 times before they're able to grasp how it works. If it's easily digestible, are you even a real writer? Number nine, fandom means perfection. Many writers turn to their favorite books, movies, and TV shows for guidance when they're world building. You may feel compelled to analyze your favorite creations, noting what they did right and where they fell short, but don't do it. Your favorites are perfect. 
favorite. They have to be. That's why they're your favorites. They can't do anything wrong. But Jenna, part of adulthood and maturity is being able to recognize that perfection doesn't exist. Lies. If you gotta watch Indiana Jones with your eyes covered just to live in ignorant bliss that it is indeed an accurate reflection of the field of archaeology, then do it. You owe Harrison Ford that much. He did save us from the Nazis. And lastly, on a similar note, number 10, WWTD. What would Tolkien do? Here's a thing you need to understand about books and really any form of media entertainment at all. Audience expectations never change. That's why movies from the 1700s are exactly the same as they are today. Wait, movies didn't exist in the 1700s? <laughs> well, anyway. Tolkien is a god to fantasy lovers, and rightly so. He did everything flawlessly, no matter which era's standards. Because as we already covered, expectations never change. That's why you should emulate point by point, line by line, everything he's ever done. You may not land an agent or any readers at all, but at least you've done your Heavenly Father proud. So that's all I got for you today. It's just a joke, calm down. A huge thank you to World Anvil for sponsoring today's video and for releasing their brand new novel writing software manuscripts. The software is super easy to use and great for writers who want to write their work in progress or want to share their content for promotional reasons. I used it to share a three chapter teaser of The Savior Sister. It was crazy easy. It took maybe 20 minutes tops, and now it's live for everyone to enjoy. If you're interested in World Anvil, you can try them out for free, or for a limited time, you can get 20% off master and grandmaster membership using code Jenna Moresi. Get on it, use the code. It's awesome. I love it. You'll love it too. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I post new videos on Wednesdays, and if you want to be alerted as soon as I upload, ring that bell. The Savior Sister is available for pre-sale right now in ebook, hardback, and paperback. I'm also holding a massive pre-sale giveaway where you could win one of over 35 prizes. I have the information listed below. Check it out. And be sure to follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Tumblr, Facebook, and of course, you can tweet me at Jenna Moresi. Bye. You've read Tobias's story. Now it's time for Layla's. The Savior Sister, coming soon.